Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Say amen if you have it. Let's read together. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. As you're seated, will you say to someone, your obedience to the Lord's command. Your obedience to the Lord's command. Amen. I want to read a couple of additional passages. One is in Acts chapter 8, verses 39, 35 through 39. Acts chapter 8, verses 35 through 39. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Amen. Last passage from Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, verses 14 through 18. Mark chapter 16, verses 14 through 18. Reads, afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Time will not allow me to speak in depth on all of these passages. But they're very important that you understand what we're doing today. Amen. Although it's a ceremony, it is not simply ceremony. Amen. It is obeying the ordinance or the commandment of the Lord himself. Amen. Praise God. In the new members class this morning, I was saying to the new members that we, what distinguishes us as Christians is not the clothes we wear or the clothes that we don't wear. Come on. It is not a man where we live where we work, how much money we have, what kind of car we drive. 
But what we believe, come on somebody, what we believe, what makes us Christians is that we believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And it is vitally important that every one of us that claim relationship with God through Jesus Christ understand what distinguishes us. Amen. Praise God. What we're about to do today, we are not saved by water baptism. I said we are not saved by water baptism. Amen. Water baptism is a outward symbol of an inward and spiritual grace. Outward symbol of an inward and spiritual grace. Come on. Amen. We who are believers, we who identify with Christ, we identify with his death, burial, and his resurrection. And in a few minutes, when we take you to the pool to be baptized, when you step down into the water, come on, there is no salvation in the water. The reason why we're taking you to the water is that you've already received salvation through Jesus Christ. Come on, someone. But you need to know that you are fulfilling the mandate of Christ, the commandment of the Lord. Come on. Amen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Come on. For it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and also to the Creek. Come on, somebody. I'm not ashamed to identify with him before the whole world. I heard him say, if you be ashamed to own me before men, I'll be ashamed to own you before my Father and the holy angels. Come on, somebody. And I, I am not ashamed to identify with him. Watch this. Not just in church, but in the street. I'm not ashamed to identify with him. Come on. Not just in the church, but on my block where I live. I, I, I am not ashamed to identify with him in the community where I live. Come on. It may not be fashionable. It may not be fetish, but I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And the reason I love him is not that I loved him first, but first he loved me. Come on, tell somebody first he loved me. Hallelujah. Excuse me, I'm trying to keep from getting worked up. I don't know about you, it excites me. Try not to get worked up. Amen. Praise God. Jesus says to his disciples, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, and Jesus came, spake unto them, saying, all power. Ask somebody, do you believe it? Tell them, tell them, not some. Tell them Jesus has all power. Hallelujah. Come on, amen. Don't worry about the devil. Come on. The devil has some power, but Jesus got all power. Come on. I heard him say, thank you, Lord. He said, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Come on. And nothing shall by any means harm you. Come on. Instead of talking about what the devil is doing, we ought to be talking about what Jesus is doing. My Bible said, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. There is much more grace than there is sin. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? Oh, honey, it's all over you. It's all behind you. It's beside you. It's in front of you. Grace, the unmerited favor of God. Hallelujah. And God has given it in such great measure 
that the devil can't stop it. The devil can't block it. Come on, the reason why you are here today, if you are saved, if you have received Christ as your Savior, Jesus said, or the Word of God said, you did not call me, I called you. You didn't choose me, I chose you. Come on, amen. Somebody said, hallelujah, herein is love. Come on, that uh, uh, when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I don't know about you, but I think about it every now and then. There was a time when I didn't want Jesus. Will anybody tell the truth and stay in the church? Amen. I wasn't always saved. There was a time I didn't want Christ. Amen. But he kept knocking at my door. Come on. Amen. He kept knocking at my door. He kept loving on me. He kept calling me. Amen. Through the saints, through them that knew him, through them that loved him. Come on, somebody. And, and one day the Lord arrested me. One day, hallelujah, hallelujah. One day he intercepted me. Hallelujah. I heard Paul say it this way. He said, not as though I were already perfect. He said, amen, either were I not already, amen, uh, 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 attain. Amen. He said, but I follow after if that I may also apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. In other words, I'm not perfected yet, but I'm on my way. Tell somebody I'm not perfected yet. Tell them I may not be everything I should be, but I know I'm not what I used to be. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Come on, somebody. Thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I got to quit. I got to quit because we got to go downstairs. Amen. Right quick. Thank you, Lord. But you got to believe it. Watch this. I'm, qu I'm quitting. Listen. He says to them, amen, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Listen, go ye therefore, teach all nations. Come on, y'all. Don't y'all know that the preacher can't do it all by himself? Come on. And ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, Jesus said. In other words, he want all of us to witness for him. Come on, not just the preacher, not just the pastor. You ought to have your own testimony. You ought to know where the Lord brought you from. Watch this. I can tell you about Peter. I can tell you about Paul. I can tell you about James. But Peter, Paul, and James can't give my testimony. Not my testimony. He saved me June 23rd. 1977. Come on. What was your day? Do you remember your day? The Lord came into your life and gave you a testimony that nobody can tell but you. Thank you, Lord. I didn't go to church that day to get saved. Come on, y'all. That's what I mean. That's what the Bible means when it said, when he said, you didn't choose me, I chose you. You didn't call me, I called you. According to Ephesians chapter 2, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and in sins. Come on, somebody. I went to church one day dead in church. Y'all don't hear me. And while I was sitting on the organ playing for the service, I heard the word like I had never heard it before. Come on. I knew it was talking to me. I knew that God was speaking to me. Amen. That day, I couldn't play because I could hear the word of God being spoken to me as I had never heard it before. And I knew the Lord was calling for me. Amen. I got up off the organ and went to the altar for repentance. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Opened my mouth and said, yes, Lord. Come on. And ever since that day, Somebody who know what I'm talking about say, ever since that day, I've been running for my life. Thank you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Jesus said to them, amen. The Bible said, hallelujah, that he said unto them, amen. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. The na- in the name of the Father. He could not mean for me to get you in the water and say all the names of the Father. We would be there an awful long time. In the name of Jehovah, in the name of Yahweh, in the name of Elohim, in the name of, come on somebody, anybody know his name? Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rapha, we still be standing in the water. Come on, y'all. I would not have even dipped you yet. So that's not what he meant. He said, in the title of the Father, amen, come on, in the name of the Father and of the Son. Now, that's a name, Jesus. Come on, hallelujah. Somebody say Jesus. He said, and of the Holy Ghost. That's in the person of the Holy Ghost, who is the third person of the Godhead. Thank you, Lord. He said, teaching them to observe all things. Whatsoever I have commanded you. In other words, know what the scripture said. Live what the scripture said. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not ceremonialism. It's knowing what the scripture said. It's knowing, hallelujah, Jesus said, uh, if you know these things of mine and do them, he said, happy are ye. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And my last point, in Acts chapter 8, verses 35 through 39, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. Well, the scriptures are telling us there that there was an Ethiopian eunuch sitting in his chariot. He was the keeper of Queen Candace's treasure. Now, I don't know about you, but eunuchs, or rather Ethiopians, are black, like me. Come on, somebody. Last time I looked, Ethiopians are black. And so this man was the keeper of Queen Candace's treasure. He was not an ignorant man. He was an educated man. Come on. But he sat in the chariot reading the 53rd Psalm. Come on. Oh, brother, I'm sorry, 53rd chapter of Isaiah. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of a dry ground. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with, with grief. And we did, amen, hide our faces from him. And we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. Thank you, Lord. Now, the scripture was telling the eunuch about Jesus. But although this man was educated and the keeper of Queen Candace's treasure, when the Holy Spirit conveyed Philip to the chariot, He asked the Ethiopian eunuch, do you understand what you read? The Ethiopian eunuch answered, how can I except some man guide me? I want you to know something. I know many of you say, I don't have to come to church in order to be saved. Show me that scripture. You can't find that scripture because that's not in the Bible. But I will tell you, That Hebrews chapter 10 said, and forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together 
as the manner of some is. Come on. But exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. I will tell you that the book of Malachi said, hallelujah, that, that they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. Come on. And the Lord hearkened unto them and heard their cry. Well, let me tell you something, because I ain't got no help today. Amen. When it said that they that feared the Lord spake, and all, spake often one to another, that mean they had to the presence to do that because they didn't have no cell phones. They didn't have no iPads. They didn't have no Facebook. They didn't have no YouTube. There was no social media. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. So they had to be in each other's presence in order to speak often one to another. Come on, somebody. Amen. But there is a new school now that thinks that I don't need to gather together with the saints. Come on. But I tell you, the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Where there's unity, there is strength. I said, where there's unity, there is strength. And the reason why so many are weak is because you're separated from encouraging and life-giving word. Hallelujah. We need the word, a daily diet of the word of God. I don't know about you, but nothing will excite me. Nothing will stir me like the word of God. Come on and say, yes, Lord. I heard Jeremiah say, thank you, Lord. I said I wasn't going to speak anymore in his name. He said that, in other words, the more I said, the madder people got at me. The more I talked about God, the more they seemed to hate me. He said, and when I said that I wasn't going to speak anymore in his name, he said I tried to be quiet. He said, but the word was in me just like fire shut up in my bones. He said, and I could not stay. I had to speak. I had to preach. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? And if you really know Jesus, if you really have a relationship with him, you can't be quiet. You can't stay silent. You got to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. I said you got to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me take you to the water. Thank you, Lord. Come on, everybody standing. Everybody standing.